brothers and sisters in Christ, it's good to be with you again tonight. It's good to uh, experience the power and the love of God each and every glorious day. You know, as we journey through this world, we face so many different things in lives, but I'm so thankful and I'm so glad that no matter what I've went out and faced throughout the day, no matter what situation or circumstance, no matter what's been said or what's been done. I'm so thankful <clears throat> that I know that I can still feel his presence and know his love in the midst of the storm. I can still feel his power and his authority rising up in those moments when it feels like, Brother Rocky, the world is just going to overtake me. In those moments, in those times, in those situations, it's so amazing that, Sister Crystal, that we can experience the presence, the power, and the love of God no matter where we are, no matter what we're going through. We can experience God in our home. We can experience God in the car. We can experience God at work, at the store, uh, at the church. Uh, we can experience God wherever we are, guys. And one thing that it's going to take for us to do that in order to see the will of God move in our lives into the lives of others is we have to humble ourselves before God, come to him in pure humility in such a way that we're humbling ourselves before him, recognizing that he is the power, he is the love, he is the one who maketh the way where there seemeth to be none. He is the one who is definitely that lily, that bright and morning star. Let me tell you something. I don't know about you tonight, but I'm thankful, Sister Tammy, that I know one who can do all things tonight. And my friends tonight, I know one, Sister Brenda, that loves me more than anything that I could ever imagine. And not only does he love me through his word or his words, but he loves me through his actions. You know, tonight, if you will just settle your heart and your mind and meditate upon God right where you are, my friend. If you would just allow yourself to focus and tune into God tonight. You know, in the upper room, Brother Ronnie, it's when they come together in one mind and one accord and they humble themselves before God with one vision and one hope and one thought that the power of God fell, Sister Glory, and they experienced the great mighty power of God the word of God says that it was like a great mighty rushing wind that came into that room and they all experienced it and it set upon them like clothes of tongues of fire and they begin to utter other languages but my friend let me tell you something tonight. Sister Cindy, I don't know about all the other things that I've experienced in my journey, but I know this that makes me happy. Number one, that day when I came down and I gave my life to the Lord and I felt that freedom, I felt those chains begin to fall off. You know what it took for that to happen, Brother Ronnie? I had to, number one, I had to get rid of pride. I had to get rid of self. I had to humble myself before God, John, and I had to admit, as the conviction power uh, was raining down on my heart and my soul, uh, I had to, while the tears uh, were flowing down my cheek and my heart was about to beat out of my chest, I had to humble myself and before God and say, Lord, uh, here I am, yes, uh, all that you've shown me I am guilty of. Yes, Lord, I have come up short. Yes, Lord, I am wrong, but hold on, you think? that in that language you get to utter that same statement that says Father forgive me a sinner come into my life and save me and set me free let me tell you something my friends there's no greater experience in all of life than when that moment happens in your life brother Andy and the chains of sin and darkness begin to fall off of you and you begin to feel that freedom in Jesus Christ, you begin to feel that love just springing up inside of you. Let me tell you something. The way it felt for me, I don't know about you. 
but the way that it felt for me and that moment and that hour when I asked the Lord to forgive me, Brother Andy, it was as if God wrapped his loving arms around me and began to hold me tight and began to whisper into my heart and my mind, everything's going to be alright. Everything is going to be good. My child, yes, I know you've sinned and yes, you have come short. My child, this night, you're sins be forgiven thee. Oh, let me tell you something, my friend. No greater love hath any man than this, than one that would lay down his life for his friend. I'm thankful that tonight that God was able to forgive me and set me free from my sins and let me experience such a great freedom and a great love. But my friends, before that ever could happen, I had to strip away pride. Do you know that pride gets in our way? My friends, it'll get us in trouble. As a matter of fact, pride will get in the way so much, Brother Philip, that we hold on to bitterness and envy and unforgiveness. We look at the world through the lens of hatred. We look at the world through lenses of anger. My friends, let me tell you, when you strip off the pride, when you get rid of all of that fleshly stuff, and you begin to humble yourself before God, honey, you open the door of your heart and you give him freedom to come in. See, that's what he means by he says, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open it, I'll come in and sup with him and he with me. My friends, tonight God is knocking on the door of many hearts. Not only upon the heart of the sinner, but the heart of the Christian. God is knocking tonight and he's saying, Child, give me that care. Cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. He's knocking. He said, take pride out of the way. Don't worry about what the world is going to think. Honey, I want you to know something tonight. It don't matter what we do in this life. There'll always be somebody who's going to look at us and not think the right thing or say the right thing. But my friends, tonight, I'm not weighed down by the opinions of man. I'm not weighed down by the things of the world. They can judge me. They can say what they want to about me. But oh, my friends, tonight, I know the free freedom and the joy and the love that I feel through Christ Jesus. Why? Because I've taken down all of that pride and that self-centeredness. I don't believe that I'm the one that's doing anything, my friend. So many people are taking the credit that God's work is doing in their life and they're trying to take that credit for themselves. But my friends, I want you to know something. All honor and glory belongs to God tonight. Because let me tell you something, Brother Rocky, without the power of God, people's lives cannot change. See, I've been around, uh, Brother John. Uh, I've heard some of the most beautiful singing uh, that any human could have ever heard. I've watched some of the most amazing things uh, happen in people's lives, things work out in people's lives. Uh, but my friend, let me tell you something. Without the Spirit of God, the power of God, without us humbling ourselves to the will of God, we will never experience the full power of God. You know, putting things together in a perfect way. You know, I know many people are looking to do things perfectly. You could sing a song perfectly. And you could write the perfect message and put it in the perfect order. But I'm going to tell you something tonight. If the power and the Spirit of God is not in the singing, if the power and the Spirit of God is not in the Word, if the power and the Spirit of God is not in the message, my friend, I'm going to tell you we're not going to see change 
chains be broken and life set free the way that God desires for that to happen in our lives. You want to know why the world is in a mess? Because people think more about Uno number one than they do about him. My friends, the majority of the world, when it comes to serving and, and doing what they're looking for, Brother Andy, is what they're going to get out of it. It's all about themselves. How am I going to receive? How am I going to get? Honey, let me tell you something. I remember a section of scripture that says that God wants us to present our body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. My friend, that very beginning statement says a living sacrifice. Meaning, Brother Ronnie, we're moving from having our name on a church row. We're moving from just having that lip service. We're moving just from doing things to check, mark, and box. But honey, we're doing things because the power of the Holy Spirit is moving on our lives. Let me tell you, the best services I've ever been in in my whole entire life. Brother Philip was not when the preacher led it or when some man or woman and let it, when the power of God let it, that's when I watched the church move and come alive, let me tell you when a testimony stirs the heart of one and they get up and begin to share, not because they want people to look at them not because they want to brag on self, but because the power of God is leading because the message needs to be heard, let me tell you when the preacher gets up and begins to preach. Honey, the Holy Spirit needs to be the one in control. Because here's what I know tonight. A lot of times we let things hinder us from experiencing the power of God, Brother John. Many times we get in God's way instead of letting God have His way. I'm going to tell you, if we really want to see our churches grow, if we really want to see ministry, true ministry happen, if we want to see sinners set free, Christians strengthened and encouraged, we must get to the place where God has free reign in our lives and in the life of the church. We cannot hinder nor bind the power of God and expect God to save our families. We cannot hinder nor bind the power of God and expect the church to grow. We cannot hinder nor bind the power of God and expect the fullness of God to take place. You say, preacher, what do you mean? Give me some scripture. Well, let me tell you something. The word of God says that that we bind on earth is bound in heaven. That that we loose on earth is loose in heaven. My friends, it's time that you stop being an anchor or a stopping post and you start being somebody who is willing to follow the power of God and let God move. You say, brother, I'm afraid to do that. I don't know how to just let God have his way in my life. I don't know how just to let God's will be done. My friends, I want us to look at some stuff here tonight. In the book of Luke, chapter 14. Luke, chapter 14 tonight, beginning at verse 1. I want you to look at this very first beginning set of scripture. Because Brother Ronnie... These people didn't know what to do when the power of God began to move in a situation. It said, now it happened as he went into the house of one of the rulers at the Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath. We know that that is a day of rest. We know that the word of God says that man was not made for the Sabbath, but Sabbath for man. My friends, let me tell you something tonight. Let me tell you right now. 
This is a day in which they had set aside to rest and to focus on God. I think one of the things that we get in trouble with, uh, honey, my friends, is that, that we don't let God have his time or his day in our life. We don't set aside that day the way that we used to and spend it worshiping God and doing the things of God. My friends, what we've done is we've stolen God's time and filled it with everything else. But here he says that they watched him closely. Now here they were. Brother Ronnie, these religious people watching Jesus closely. And behold, there was a certain man before him who had the dropsy. And Jesus answering spoke to the lawyers and the Pharisees saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? Now here, Sister Crystal, he is positioning them with a question. Are we able, he's saying, to allow the power and the authority of God to take place? Or are we going to hinder God by the way that we want things done? Here. We know there was a challenge in their heart and their mind, Brother Rocky, because to them in their hearts and minds, they had considered healing to be an act of work. And therefore, Brother John, they saw that it was wrong. They would have rather let this man suffer than to see the power of God move on his life. The Word of God says, but they kept silent. And he took him. And Jesus healed him. And let him go. Then he answered them saying. Now he knew. What was stirring in their heart already. He knew the challenge they had. Why is it brother Ronnie. When God blesses in a great and mighty way. That we have so many people standing around in doubt. Standing around ready to attack what God is doing. Instead of them rejoicing. You know the word of God says. That when one part of the body rejoices. That we should all rejoice. That when one part of the body is hurting. That we all should hurt. But brother Annie. Why couldn't these people rejoice at the fact that this man received his healing? But instead, there was controversy in their hearts. I cannot tell you how many times that I see people doing the same thing today. If I see a sinner come down to that altar and give their life to Jesus. Sister Crystal, I'm going to accept their word that they repented to God. I'm going to shout and rejoice and praise God for a sinner that has given their soul unto God. He said, yeah, but preacher, this makes about trick number seven for him. I'm going to tell you something, my friend. Sister Cindy, I'm going to rejoice Every time they come down to the altar. You want to know why? Because that means to me uh, that there's something, Brother Ronnie, that the Holy Spirit is still doing inside of that person's heart. There's something that's still taking place. Why would I want to hinder or put a stumbling block? Why would I not want to go down and love on them and encourage them to hold on? Because I'm going to tell you, there's been many who have walked away from God who no longer even return. My friend, we should rejoice when the power of God is moving in the lives of others. But here there was some controversy. And Jesus said, which of you having a donkey or an ox that has fallen into a pit, 
will not immediately pull him out on the Sabbath day. And they could not answer him regarding these things. Now I want you to think about this, Sister Crystal. Here they just watched the power of God move in a mighty way that there's no doubt that the only way this man could have been healed was through God. But yet, they stand there with controversy in their heart, not willing to humble themselves to the power of God that is moving. I cannot tell you as a pastor over the years how many people that I've watched sit in the church house, sit on the church pews, and they are so stubborn that they refuse to let the power of God to move their lives. They're holding on to things that they should not hold on to. Brother Philip, they're letting the things of this world get in their way of experiencing the power of God in their lives. And do you know what it says? It talks about Quench not the Spirit. How many knows that there's so many that are called up on their negativity? There's so many that are called up on the things of the world. There's so many that are sitting around holding things against one another that they're missing the power of God moving in their very presence. These people could not answer Jesus a word. Why? Because they were letting too much stand in their way. Did not allow themselves to be humbled to the move and the power of God. And they were missing what God was trying to establish in their lives. You know, over the years... I've watched God do great things, Sister Cindy. Do you know, I remember a time, Sister Crystal, when a sinner would come down and give their life to Jesus at the altar, that everyone in the church house would praise the Lord and rejoice. And they would line up in a line. Nobody had to ask them. Nobody had to tell them. They would line up in a line and one by one with tears flowing down their face as if it was their own child would come down and wrap their arms around their neck, give them a hug, welcome them to the family of God and praise the Lord for a soul that has returned or been set free. See, somewheres, We've lost the ability to experience God with rejoicing and praise. Somewheres, we've lost the ability to see the power of God moving. Oh, Brother Ronnie, I don't even want to get on how hard it is to get an amen in the house of God today. One man told me, he said, Preacher, you can't even pay $100 for an amen. Somewheres we're missing what God is doing. And it's we're, we're missing in such a way we're not getting excited about it. Now, now, I'm not telling you that we have to get so uncouth that we become ungodly, unorganized, and confusing. That's not what I'm saying. But my friends, let me tell you something. Whenever the Word of God is speaking to your heart and you're hearing the preached Word of God and the power of God is moving in the church, there should be a little bit of excitement. Why? Because there's not every church that's getting the Word of God preached to them. How do you know that, preacher? Because, Brother Philip, I have people telling me all the time, how much they enjoy the preaching, not because it's me, but because I preach from the Word of God and I bring my messages and I bring my answers from God's Word. I can't tell you how many people tell me they enjoy that because they don't get that everywhere they go. 
But yet, and I'm going to say this, it might hurt somebody's feelings if they're listening in, I don't know. But yet, I have people who get it every Sunday and act as if it don't even make a dent in their life. My friend, I tell people all the time, if the word of God is not moving them, then honey, their wood's wet. There's not a fire burning. They need to do something to get a fire kindled back in their life and get back on fire with God. Brother Ronnie would know what I'm talking about. There's been times in my years of preaching that I knew that it came out of the Word of God. That I knew that it came from God. That I felt the Spirit of God. But I can't tell you, Brother Phil, how many times that I've left a church and felt like nothing was taking place in people's lives. Some words were missing just coming humbly before God. You say, well, preacher, if he'd stop preaching so much on sin and start preaching about all that good stuff, about the promises and the blessings and the streets of gold and all of those things, we would be more excited. I'm going to tell you something, my friend. You should be able to get excited about every word, every scripture, every chapter, and every book if it comes out of the holy book. But see, somewheres, people are missing what God is doing. I'll tell you, there was a lady who blessed my heart this past Sunday, and I'm not going to mention her name. I wasn't given permission. But she left the church house Sunday. She came, she shook my hand, and she told me, said, Preacher, she said, I felt the Holy Spirit from the time you started preaching until you stopped preaching. She said, I felt God all over that message and thanked me thoroughly for preaching the message that God laid on my heart. She wasn't bragging about me. She was bragging about what God was doing through the power of the Word in her life. And my friends, that's what we should be seeing every time we come together in the house of God online or wherever we're at that the Word of God is being preached and teached. She came with a humble heart to receive. And guess what she did, Brother Ronnie? She received and was able to take something home. He goes on. And he says, So he told a parable to those who were invited when he noted how they chose the best places, saying to them, When you are invited by anyone to a wedding feast, said, Do not sit down in the best place. Huh? least one more honorable than you be invited by him. And he who invited you and him come and say to you, give place to this man, and then you begin with shame to take the lowest place. He says, don't push and put yourself so high that you think you're better or above everyone else. I cannot tell you, Sister Gloria, how many times that I've been in the presence of others who practically spoke down to everyone else and they pumped their fist on their chest and talked about, look at me, here am I, this is what I'm doing. My friends, I'll tell you tonight as well as I'll tell you any other time. If there's a message that blesses your heart, a song that touches your life, or anything else that we may do in the kingdom of God, give all honor and glory to God, because, honey, I can't do it without Him. See, we sometimes come in and expect that all focus is on us. But, my friends, it's the house of God. Where the word of God says to enter his gates with praise and thanksgiving. We come to the house of God to glorify and honor him and praise him. We come to hear the message that he has for us that we might grow in him. 
and that again we might go to the world and share with them all the great things that he has done. When we come humbly before God recognizing that we need to hear his voice whatever he sends our way, whether it's saying, good job, or he's saying, you've got to change, you've got to repent, whatever it is that God is saying, he says it because he loves us. I remember a little woman that Jesus met at the well. Yes, she had things in her life and Jesus knew all about them. But do you know what? After Jesus had an encounter with her and her with him, she went back to her town because she experienced, she humbly become for him and she experienced what God wanted her to receive and she went back with the excitement, said, Come! And hear this man that told me all things about me. Come! Do you know that one of the reasons why that churches are dying and not growing is because, Brother Ronnie, the people of God are not leaving the house of God with the excitement about the message that God has shared with them and carrying it back to the world and inviting people to come. Do you know, statistically, it shows that it's not big events, that it's not the pastor inviting but do you know, statistics shows that 85% of church growth is because the members of the church are on fire about what God is doing in their church and they're going out and compelling people to come to the house of God and hear the word of God. He says, But when you are invited, go and sit down in the lowest place. So that when he who invited you comes, he may say to you, Friend, go up higher. Then you will have glory in the presence of those that sit at the table with you. Do you know, I tell people, and I said this at my church here not too long ago, if we are too good to serve, then my friend, we have no business trying to lead. The Word of God tells us that we're to prefer our brother or our sister's lady before ourselves. But see, so many times people struggle with doing that. And Brother John, they're missing what God wants to do in their life and the lives of others around them. He said, For whoever exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. Do you know this was a constant statement that Jesus was sharing with others and even his disciples that the last shall be first and the first shall be last? There's one scripture, Brother Ronnie, that says, if you will be faithful over a few things, he'll make you ruler over many. But do you know what people want, Sister Crystal? They want some kind of theory or algorithm. Yeah, I use that big word. They want us to give them some kind of way to go from point A to point D and pass B and C. In other words, they want to walk in the door, give their life to Jesus, and be set in the highest place in the church possible. Why? Because it's become all about them. Let me tell you something, my friends. Every time I go to the house of God, every time I read the Word of God, every time I get in the presence of God, honey, I know that I need to sit at the Master's feet and learn. I'm still growing every day. How about you? He said, then he also said to him, who invited him, when you give a dinner or supper, he said, do not 
ask your friends, your brothers, your relatives, nor your rich neighbors, lest they also invite you back and you be repaid. Now, now he's not saying that our family and friends and neighbors can't be apart. But what he's trying to point out here is this. Is that if you only invite those who will in turn repay you, you're missing the full ministry that God wants to do because God wants you to reach out and help those who have no ability to pay you back as well. He says, but when you give a feast, invite the poor, the maimed, the lame, and the blind. See, when I go out, Brother Philip, and I'm witnessing to the world, when I'm witnessing to the community here in Fredericksburg, Virginia, I'm not looking at titles. I'm not looking at clothes. I'm not looking at finances. I'm looking at souls. And I invite the broken as well as the, the ones who, who are dressed well as well. I invite everyone. But I do not shy away from those who have nothing to give physically. Because I'm going to tell you something, Brother Rocky. I remember a man by the name of John the Baptist who the Word of God said was a forerunner for Jesus Christ. The world, when they looked at him, made fun of him. As a matter of fact, some children mocked him. He was bald, living in the wilderness, eating locust and honey, not dressed in the best. But God used him as the forerunner for the Savior of the world. I wonder what we're missing when all we look at is the outer appearance. What are we missing when all we look at is what they can get financially and physically? I wonder how many times, Brother Philip, that we've missed a prayer warrior. I wonder how many times that we miss somebody whose heart's on fire for God and who'll go out and witness and invite others. Do you know that I pastored a church? that I had a poor woman who done more inviting to the church than anyone else. Why? Because her heart was on fire with what God was doing in her life in the midst of that church. See, Brother Ronnie, I've listened to all of these Things that they teach at seminaries and all of this stuff of only use the best, only seek out the best. Honey, I got news for you. I know some broke people who don't have two pennies to rub together, who have more God in their heart and they're more on fire for God than many people that I know. As a matter of fact, when Jesus and the disciples were watching as people were casting into the treasury box. This little widow woman came and gave all that she had of two mites. And Jesus said she gave more than them all. See, I'm just going to be honest with you. If there's anyone in this world that you would not invite to come to your church and sit in your church to worship the kingdom of God with you, then my friend, you may need to bump an altar and have a little talk with Jesus and find salvation yourself. See, I remember how that they would say things about Jesus. Remember the woman who was out there doing all kinds of things, who came in and washed his feet and dried it with her hair. 
The leader says, if this man only knew who she was. My friend, he knew her. But he knew her beyond her sins and her faults. He knew the soul that cried out for freedom from sin. He knew the individual that would love him and cherish him for all that he gave to her. He says, when we invite those that are broken and maimed, listen what this scripture says, and you will be what? Blessed. Because they cannot repay you, for you shall be repaid at the resurrection of the just. See, we talk about being pleasing unto the Lord while we snob our noses at people. We talk about being pleasing unto the Lord while we look down at people. We talk about being, oh, preacher, you don't preach on that way. I'm just telling you, we're missing what God wants to do in people's lives. Say, preacher, you honestly believe that happens? I know it does. Because I can tell you that, Sister Cindy, I can't tell you how many times when I started out preaching and even today that I get overlooked for other people. There was one man, one friend of mine, and I don't begrudge him. It's not his fault. He came into the same area, Brother Ronnie, where I started out preaching, and I was doing everything I could to serve God and try to preach the Word of God and get indoors, and doors didn't open. But when this man moved in the area, and he had money, he owned mines and all these other things. People knew that he could give greatly financially. Do you know they invited him to come everywhere to preach the word of God and had never heard him preach one time. See, we have to be careful. That we're not missing. As a matter of fact, the word of God says that some have entertained angels unaware. I know she will, Brother Rocky. I know that Sister Cindy goes up to every human she can see and invites them to come to Gordon Road Church of God. I know she does. People tell me she does. And I appreciate that. It says, now, when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But listen what it says. But they all with one accord begin to give make excuses. My friends, I'm going to tell you, our families, our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers that we're inviting to come to dine at the master's table and to worship God with us better wake up. Because at one point, there's going to be a shifting. And God's going to turn our hearts to begin going out to the highways and hedges and compelling them to come in because they don't have time for God. Listen to what he says. They made their excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the cities. In your version, it may say the highways and byways. He says, and bring in, in here the poor and the maimed and the lame 
and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and still there is room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out and to the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. My friends, let me tell you something. I think we still need to invite our families. I think we still need to invite our friends. I think we still need to invite our co-workers. But my friends, let me tell you, I think we need to get out and compel them in the highways and hedges that all would come in and worship in the kingdom of God. Say, preacher, I don't know if I can do that. Annie, do you know who can give us the power to do that tonight? God Almighty. He can empower us. He can give us the boldness. He can give us the ability to go out and invite all that we can to come to the house of God. Let me tell you, if we get our hearts on saving souls, God will take care of everything else. If you remember, he says... The Gentiles seek after all of these things, these worldly things, these earthly things. He said, we know that they have need of these things. He said, but if you'll seek first the kingdom of heaven, you want to know how to grow a church? You want to see God take care of your church's bills so they're all paid and nothing's being done and you're losing your church building and you're losing your ability? Then my friends, get about saving souls. And I promise you that God will take care of everything else. He goes on and he says, I'm going to close with this. For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper There's many that are refusing to come to the house of God when they are being invited. Many of them, John, are just putting excuse after excuse after excuse. They've even went so far, Brother Eddie, as to say, I don't have to go to church. My friends, let me tell you something. The Word of God tells the church that we're to go out and make disciples. We're to go out and we're to invite these people to come and be a part of the family of God and we're to see the kingdom of God grow together. But let me tell you something. They can make whatever excuse they want to. But just like these people, who had excuses and could not come to the wedding supper. He said, they will not taste of what? Of my supper. My friends, there is a wedding supper coming. The bridegroom's going to come after the bride, which is the church. And he's coming for all those cells to them that have made themselves ready, who are without spot, without blemish, who have on the wedding garment. Those who, went, who when the call came and the invitation came, they came and answered the invitation of God, and they gave their hearts over to Him, and they're worshiping Him, and they're praising Him, and they're doing His will. And all those... And I hate to say this, but all those who have excuse why they can't come to church, why they can't come and dine at the master's table, why they can't come and worship with their brothers and sisters in Christ, all of those better be careful because when the bridegroom comes, it'll be too late to get ready then. Let us pray. Father God, Help us to stay humble before you. Help us to come, Lord, and anything that hinders us from seeing what you want to do in our lives, anything that hinders us from getting the vision that you have for our church, anything that causes us to bind the Spirit of God. Father God, I ask you, 
Help us to remove that out of our lives. Help us to be humble servants on fire for you. Help us, Father God, to be able to see all that you are doing and rejoice for all the things that you are doing in our lives, in our church, in our communities, and in our homes. Father God, help us to find the joy of thy salvation once again. Father God, let us look on others with love and compassion. For Father God, we know that you will bring the abundance of blessings when we follow your plan and your will in our lives, in our churches, in our communities, in our homes, and in this nation. It's not until we humble ourselves before you and let you truly lead us. It's not until then that we'll see your full power move and lives begin to be changed and set free. Father God, let your will be done tonight. If there's one that's struggling, if there's one that don't know you tonight, that's listening in, I pray that right now a change will take place in their hearts and lives. Father God, if there's one listening in, looking for a place to go. Father God, move on their heart and let them know they are welcome to come to Gordon Road Church of God to worship you, Father God, because all we look for is the blood of Christ. Father God, tonight, speak your word that it may be so. Speak it now according to your will, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and amen. Thank you for being with me tonight. Thank you for praying with me and for me and for others. Several gave prayer requests in tonight. Please make sure that you pray over these individuals. I know Sister Cindy, Brother Ronnie, my wife Cynthia, Brother Rocky, and many others. And Sister Brenda and others need a healing touch. So I pray that you will just be, continue to pray for them tonight and their needs. My friends, don't forget to click the share button. Share tonight's message. Don't forget to come back tomorrow night at 9 o'clock for Winding Down with Pastor Perry. My friends, wherever you go, I pray that God goes with you. Whatever you do, I pray that God will strengthen you and bless you. But most of all, my friends, I pray that God will use each and every one of you to reach someone else for the kingdom. Be blessed and have a wonderful night.